Uh, so, uh, Michael, thank you very much. And uh, so I'm going to talk today about the idea that I submitted for the um, uh, idea challenge, which is Agora, which is a Polish media company. Before I do that, just a word on um, our firm, Firebird Management. The only thing that I will point out from that slide is that we eat our own cooking. Uh, about 40% of the money that we manage is our own funds and uh, which allows us to get into some of the more illiquid, interesting companies in Eastern Europe, like Agora and uh, companies like that represent about 40% of our portfolio. So Agora is a Polish media uh, company, uh, about 110 million market cap. It's best known for its newspaper, and that's kind of what, uh, which is Gazeta Wyborza, which is essentially the New York Times of Poland. And that's where uh, the opportunity comes from. But before I talk about the company, my introduction to the company was actually quite interesting that I was going to Poland a couple of years ago and uh, we were screening for companies and we were screening on based on free cash flow uh, to market cap, the basic things, and uh, talked to our favorite broker there about setting up some meetings and uh, Agora was one of the names that popped up. And they said, you don't want to see that company. Like, why don't I want to see that company? They said, it's going to make you sad. Like, how's it gonna make me sad? He said, you meeting with this company is just sad, it sucks the life out of you, you don't want to do it because it's a dying business. I said, well, I gotta see that. So I went in and it was a, you know, one of the more interesting meetings that I've seen, very little time spent on the newspaper, a lot of on these other businesses that I'm gonna talk about later. And it turned out that the management changed about two or three years before, uh, before this meeting and they didn't even know about it. It's this how overlooked this company is in Poland. Before I speak about the company, a little bit about in Poland. EU country, 38 million people, only country in Europe that went through the 08 recession without a uh, decline in GDP. And one thing that I wanna point out about Poland is that companies and people in Poland, I think succeed despite their government, not because of the government. You see a lot of the news uh, in European Union about them trying to challenge judicial independence, uh, all of these different things, we're not a fan of it. But the business environment is good. People try to work hard. They're part of the European supply chain. And that's the reason why the economy is growing, not because of the great decisions by the government. Algora itself, trading at four and a half times EV EBITDA, 6% dividend yield, took a nice dive. The reason it took a nice dive is because of the association with the newspapers. I said Gazeta Wyborcza is the New York Times of Poland. And uh, this year, the news came out that their distributor, which is a chain of kiosks across the country, that represents about 30% of their volume, is essentially going bankrupt. The market is looking through that, the impact on the earning, a potential impact on the earnings of the newspaper, and uh, really has taken down the company by about from really cheap level to ridiculously cheap level at this point. Before I talk about all these other businesses, I do want to spend a little bit on uh, newspaper. This is the leading voice of opposition in Poland, not the best position with the government that's turning increasingly authoritarian. This used to be half of their business uh, in terms of uh, EBITDA, now it's down to less than 10%, where the government could hurt them from a point of view withdrawing or advertising from state-owned companies, they already did that, uh, and that's one of the reasons why the profitability went down. Another thing, while the copy sales are going down, the interesting thing that's happening is that they have developed a very nice digital business. So the number of digital subscriptions that they have right now is higher than uh, copy sales. Digital subscriptions are not as profitable for now. Uh, it only represents about 25% of their uh, subscription revenue. But there's another example of a company that went through a very similar uh, in kind of environment, and this is New York Times that went through, uh, was considered to be a dying company through most, uh, most of this decade. Uh, you had a significant drop in uh, print circulation. You had the increase in uh, physical subscription revenues, in uh, digital subscription revenues. And eventually, once that got big enough, you got margin expansion because it's a more profitable business. And you got a multiple expansion as well. So I'm not saying that that's where the value in Agora is, but I just want to say that don't write off the press segment. Where is the value in Agora? So if you take a look at the structure of EBITDA over the last few years, it was more or less steady. Uh, so the, uh, the EBITDA number has been more or less steady. The structure changed dramatically. A lot of the earnings are now coming from the movies and books, outdoor, and these other segments that I'm gonna talk about right now. These growing segments of the company uh, have a, a CAGR of 11% uh, per annum. 
Uh, right now, it represents about 90% of their EBITDA. And as I mentioned before, you're getting this company at four and a half times of EBITDA with net cash. Movies and books is essentially movie theaters. They are one of the three big movie theater chains in Poland. All three chains are about the same size. The one thing that I want to mention about this segment is that uh, Poland is still fairly early in terms of modernizing their uh, movie theaters. 40% uh, of movie theaters in Poland are still the single screen old style movie theaters that eventually are going to get replaced by multiplexes and places like US. 95% of the movie theaters are the multiplexes, and it's just a better product. So it's just a matter of time before they get replaced. It's a very good business, very profitable business. In Poland, you're starting from a low base, and sales in the Bidach have grown dramatically in the segment uh, for the company. Outdoor, very interesting business as well. It's not these traditional, you know, a long stick and, and a thing on top of a stick. You're talking about new modern panels. You're talking about bus stations, you're talking about uh, digital, digital panels. And this is a business that has changed over for them quite a bit. They spent 120 million zloty over the last few years on installing these newer panels that led to significant improvement in revenue per panel and significant drop in maintenance cost per panel. So what you have as a result is EBITDA is doubling the return on invested capital on this investment has been fantastic. There's a company called Yieldbird, which is hidden within their uh, internet segment, which is a programmatic advertising agency. For those of you who don't know about programmatic advertising, it's a way for a website that has uh, advertising supply to match up with advertising demand that's coming from advertisers in real time. It's been taking share of overall online advertising. Yieldbird is one company within Agora Group that doesn't just work within Poland. They have clients across 30 countries. Um, working with small uh, niche websites in 30 different countries. It is one of the 50 fastest growing companies in, Euro in Eastern Europe, as, as recently uh, ranked by Deloitte. They've grown 600% in the last uh, five years, I believe, and the revenues of this company has grown to 68 million zloty. Just, uh, there's one public listed peer in this, uh, in this segment, a company called Trade Desk in the United States. It's much bigger, but it's trading at 14 times sales, I believe. Other segments that the company has, I only have a couple of minutes, so I'm going to run through it. They also have radio stations, 6.5% market share. It's a very lucrative business. They are, if you know anything about radio stations, there is an advantage to clustering and to having more than one radio station within the city. There's different cost advantage of doing that. Agora is in the process of doing it. Uh, revenue in EBITDA grown nicely. Internet, aside from Yieldbird, you have niche websites. They have the sports website. They have news websites. All of these different things. It's a steady business. The margin for this segment has been dropping because of Yieldbird. The Yieldbird has lower margin than, other, than the websites, but it's grown faster and it's a very interesting business, as I mentioned. So I'm going to try to put it all together. As I mentioned, companies trading at four and a half times EV, but done. If you look at where the cinemas are trading uh, in Europe, that's worth more than current market cap. If you look at where outdoor segment is, uh, outdoor companies are trading in Europe, that's worth more than current market cap. Yieldbird, I'm not taking into account, but that's definitely worth more than current market cap. Internet is worth a lot. Radio is worth a lot. Headquarters that I didn't even mention, they're building in, in uh, Warsaw, is worth three quarters of the current market cap. So you have a lot of different ways to win with this company. It's considered to be a newspaper company. Newspapers are now a fairly small percentage of the business, and you're getting a lot of uh, pretty interesting assets within that. I'm not going to go through the DCF. I'm happy to talk to you guys about it if you want to. Here's the summary. Uh, I think the IRR on this investment could be 50% plus, even, only if it goes back to the historical EV EBITDA um, ratios, which is about six, six and a half. I think it should be higher because it's now a different type of company. And hope you find it interesting. Thank you, uh, Stephen. Are there any questions? I think a lot of people are quite thirsty. Looking forward yeah, to I this. try to make it quick because I'm the last <laughs> thing between you and yeah, guys. Yeah, no, it's very good. Very interesting. Uh, interesting story. Yeah. Thanks for the idea. Yes, um, uh, does the management own any shares or have any incentive to do anything with the assets? Uh, do I have the? Yeah. There you go. Um, 
so management does own quite a bit of shares. They own 11% uh, economic interest, 35% uh, voting interest. It's a dual class share structure. Soros is involved with MDIF. Uh, free flow it is about 50%. They've been pretty good allocators of capital. I don't think they get credit for being good allocators of capital. The, the capital that has been get, going into the business that's being reinvested has been going towards the growing parts of the business. So towards the outdoor segment, towards the movie segment, towards the radio segment. And uh, whatever they don't reinvest, they spend on dividends and buybacks. I think I mentioned in the beginning, we're talking about a high single digit dividend yield. Um, and uh, they're, they're buying back shares as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, then I would like to thank, thank Stephen, you. the winner of our idea contest this year. Give him a hand.